Scripture for this service is Genesis chapter 13, verses 8 and 9. I'll read it for you. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, nor between my husband and your husband, for we are brothers. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If to the left, then I will go to the right, or if to the right, then I will go to the left. Amen. We will watch Senior Pastor's sermon, Goodness number 13. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and those who are attending this service through GCN and on the internet and YouTube and GCN viewers, this 13th session of the series on goodness marks part one on the goodness of Abraham. One of the fathers of the faith in Abraham's name is accompanied by many you know, epithets. You know, the father of faith is Abraham, and the foundation of blessings also refers to Abraham. In James 2, 23, we read that Abraham was called the friend of God. None of these modifiers, the father of faith, the fountain of blessings, or friend of God, could be attained easily. Not anybody can earn such you know, monikers. Only a person so recognized by God can be called as, as such. How could have Abraham received such recognition from God? I've elaborated on Abraham numerous times, using him as an illustration for my messages. But let's explore him from the standpoint of goodness. Abraham became a friend of God, a fountain of blessings, and a father of faith on account of his profound goodness in him. As you listen to the message on Abraham's goodness, I hope in earnest that you will eagerly long for his goodness to come and fill your heart as well. May each of you draw even closer to God and become a good vessel worthy of all the blessings that our Father God has prepared for you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the first aspect of Abram's goodness that God recognized was in Abram's gentleness and reasonableness. Gentleness and reasonableness come forth from a generous and caring heart to the extent one is changed by the truth. More specifically, gentleness is the heart by which you can give everything you possess because your heart is filled with the truth and you've been set free by it. The reasonableness is a good and beautiful heart by which, according to the truth, one is content and satisfied with one way or the other, but still chooses a way that, get, that can please God. He who is willing to be reasonable only bears the fruit of words of goodness from his mouth and the fruit of good and beautiful deeds. A perfection of such a gentleness and reasonableness had already taken a hold of Abraham's heart. So now, from which deeds of Abraham could we identify his perfect gentleness and reasonableness? An excellent example of Abraham's gentleness and reasonableness is found in Genesis chapter 13, where Abraham yielded the right of choice to his nephew Lot. Lot had been staying with Abraham since Abraham left his country, relatives, and father's house in obedience to God's will. When God blessed Abraham, Lot also enjoyed God's blessings alongside Abraham. But when both men's possessions increased, the two could no longer live together. Water and pasture were in short supply for both of them to raise large numbers of livestock. 
That's why their shepherds quarreled from time to time. Abraham wanted to be at peace with his nephew in everything. So, he made an offer to Lord, as we read in Genesis chapter 13, verses 8 and 9. So, Abraham said to Lord, Please, let there be no strife between you and me. nor in between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brothers. Abram didn't wish to argue with Lot, nor his shepherds with Lot's shepherds. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If to the left, and then I will go to the right. Or if to the right, then I will go to the left. Abram gave up the right of choice, which he could have easily taken had he so chosen. to his nephew Lot. Had Abraham selected first, he could have taken a territory that looked better in every way. But he relinquished his right so as to allow Lot to choose first. In turn, Lot didn't refuse his uncle Abraham's goodwill and chose a land more fertile and full of water. If you were in Lot's shoes, what would you have done here? If you were in Abram's shoes, what would you have done? Try and compare, I've done this, I would have done that, as you listen to this message. While you take advantage of the situation and choose the better land as Lot did, or will you give the right of choice back to your uncle? Even if Lot had returned the right of choice to Abram, Abram would give, have given it back to his nephew. No matter how many times Abram tried giving the right of choice to him, if the Lord had known the duty of man and realized Abram's grace, what should he have done? Even by way of choosing the infertile land himself, Lord ought to have given the right to the fertile land to Abram. When Abram kept offering him the better land, even after repeated refusals, if the Lord ended up choosing the better land, thinking, well, I have done my duty, but my uncle would not budge. It shows the Lord had not truly known the grace from Abram or performed his whole duty either. Of course, it would have made the Lord look better than someone who may have accepted the right of choice. But, If Lot truly knew the grace that he had received from Abraham and was grateful for it, there is no way Lot would have picked first. From the scripture, we know that Lot never refused the right of choice but accepted it and left for the land. And this shows the kind of heart that he owned. What was going on in Abram's heart at this time? When Lot chose the better-looking land and left, Abram harbored no disappointment nor ill feelings. He never felt offended because his generous heart was feeling and, and was willing to yield and be at peace with Lot. Even though Lot had carried himself in such a way and taken Abram's offer without refusing, Abram didn't harbor an ounce of disappointment or ill feeling. His heart was so gentle as to give the right of choice again and again. In being so willing to yield that he could have chosen either of two, Abram was ready to choose what was more acceptable to God. As he served others from the depths of his heart, Abram could relinquish the right to which he was entitled even to a child. And if the child asked for more, Abram would have, you know, would have gladly given more. So compared to the heart and gentleness of Abram, how gentle is your heart? You know, when discussing a certain topic, You know, about you know, what to eat or what to wear between spouses and between parents and children. With what kind of attitude did you participate? What kind of heart did you harbor? Your conduct may have said one thing, but did your heart say, Hmm, that belongs to me. I wish I could have that first. But yielding? From the depths of heart? Well, wouldn't happiness always abound in a family when each member takes after such a heart? 
There will be no arguing between spouses, between parents and children, or between siblings. When parents are well off and leave a large sum of inheritance to their children, they wouldn't have to worry about children in arguing over the inheritance. But we hear stories of siblings and their spouses fighting and coaxing each other and becoming enemies over the inheritance. But wouldn't it be wonderful if each sibling yielded more to the other and the inheritance was split among the siblings like that? I hope that our members will harbor you know, a, such a generous heart at home or at your place of work or at your business. Suppose you have ten dollars. If someone asks for all of that ten dollars, how much would you be able to give? Some may give him just one or two, some others may give five, and still others with the generous heart may even give more. But Abraham, you know, if asked for ten, he was able to give all of it from the depths of his heart. The gentleness of Abraham by which he could gladly give of everything he had is the spiritual goodness that God accepts. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, the second aspect of Abraham's goodness that God recognized was that Abraham was unselfish, upright, and faithful. His heart was not only beautiful and good, but also broad, so as to embrace many things. God gave Abraham various trials so that you know, his beautiful and big vessel would change into a perfect vessel of gold. Of course, it became, I mean, it can be said that the trials to which Abraham was subject were different from those of other prophets. For example, Moses endured a time in which he had to rid himself of his ego, his self, and shed much tears during that time. He also had to live with his in-laws for 40 years. When his ego, his self, was completely put to death, Moses' faith in God was made perfect and he could see everything with new viewpoints of faith. He professed his real thankfulness from the depths of his heart along with tears of thanks. But Instead of enduring a time of trials and tears, Abraham received the blessings through trials because he was upright before God in hope and faith. Abraham also had something to worry about and lament, but his, you know, his load was lighter than that of Moses. Abraham and Moses were subject to different types of trials because their situations and God-given duties were different. Furthermore, as each man had a different heart field, the way God cultivated each one was different. Abraham had a good and big heart and earnestly longed to walk in the honest and faithful way. He was not cursory in anything and he didn't treat anything timidly. Neither was Abram ever careless nor clumsy. Whenever I, when I go abroad for mission, you know, uh, when there was a conference, uh, and when we check out, I take a look into the rooms of our members. They don't know if I visited their rooms, but I uh, took a look at it and I came, I came out. But I haven't found a room that is well organized. I mean, the, they are messed up. That's not their home. They, they pay the, 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 they pay the, the accommodation, right? So they put towels in everywhere, and instead of you know, organizing things neat, 
He was not like that. He was messy. They just to throw them away. And then the, some the tissues were not well in the cleaned up. You know, you gotta you know, organize your bed so that、uh, the janitors come in and they will be, you know, they will be pleased. Wow, such a customers. They are from my mean, and they will give glory to God. So in abroad or in, in, in domestic, you know, I haven't seen a room that is well organized to my heart. Well, I I think I told you before about it, and then I hope you can remember it and do it well. But well, I hope your heart is changed and do it you know, everywhere you go. I was watching you know, this program on TV. You know, when a student went off to school every morning, his mother would make his bed and clean his room. So I thought to myself. Wouldn't it be nice if that kid, you know, made his own bed and kept his room clean so that he could help lighten his mother's load? I don't know how many children in their adolescence do that. Most of them in the morning, they wash, have breakfast, and go off to school, thinking that you know, making bed is a chore for their mothers. The mothers, of course, would have to make their kids' bed. Clean their rooms and keep them tidy. So there was nothing careless or clumsy about Abraham, whose heart was always upright, in conducting every manner and aspect of everything meticulously and precisely. Abraham sought to be perfect before God. This isn't to say Abraham relied on his own ability and did anything proudly. Abraham was so humble that he considered himself as nothing in the sight of God, and he fully believed that he could do all things in the name of God. That's why he was never shaken, even when he faced hardships. On top of this, because he walked in the upright and truthful manner, Abraham's life was filled with blessings. This attribute of Abraham. Was the aspect of goodness that God recognized? How good and how beautiful a heart did Abraham have? Some people say that they behave in faith, but are neither honest nor truthful because of their selfish desires. But A truly good-hearted person follows an upright and faithful way because he believes that God will bless him. On account of Abraham's such attributes, the word of God's blessing in Genesis 12:2, which says, "I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing." Indeed. Came to pass. Would God give such blessings to just anyone? Would God randomly call just anybody and give such blessings? Let's explore Abraham's integrity and faithfulness through a number of specific examples. In Genesis 14, when his nephew Lot and his household were involved in the war and taken as captives, Abram waged war, was victorious, and rescued Lot and his family from the enemy. When he heard Lot's you know, predicament, Abram didn't pretend to be ignorant of his nephew's troubles. Risking even his own life, Abraham rescued Lot and his family. On account of Abraham's merits, the victory belonged to the king of Sodom. Wanting to reward Abraham, the king of Sodom urged Abraham to take some of the spoils of the war. But in Genesis 14 verses 22 and 23 says, Abraham said, "I have sworn to the Lord God Most High." Possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take a thread or a sandal thong or anything that is yours, the things you know belonging to the king of Sodom. For fear, you will say, I have made Abraham rich. 
Abraham played the, a critical part in winning the war, making the king of Sodom indebted to him. So even if Abraham were to take the plunder, it wasn't you know, to satisfy his own greed in an unjust way. If he'd been even a little selfish in wanting to take the spoils, Abraham would have justified all his deeds and situations in the way he saw fit. He may have said that it would be proper for him to take the spoils because they were the wages for his crucial aid in winning the war. Abram could have claimed that they were able to win the war because God was with them. So the spoils were the blessings that God had prepared for him and that he deserved it. However, Abram never tried to take anything in selfishness or for personal benefit. That's because he had no greed for material possessions and had no desire for selfish benefits. Throughout Korean history, there have been several people who were as honest as or as similar to Abram in many regards. Take Admiral Yi Sun Shin, for example. He had no selfish motives. All he did was to serve his king and the people, even if it meant neglecting his own family and siblings. While fighting you know, violent, you know, violently, he died for his country in the last battle. I have thoroughly read the Romance of the Three Kingdoms you know, multiple times, and there was one thing that I had realized while reading it well before accepting God. There seemed to be nothing evil about you know, Xiu Liang. There were no traits or remnants of evil in him. That's how he appeared to me even when I didn't know the truth. After having come to know the truth and reflecting upon the Siu Ye Liang, I still see no traces of evil, selfishness, greed, desire to boast, or interest to pursue fame or authority. You know, from beginning to the end, as Zhuge Liang you know, sacrificed himself for the goal of serving his king, his country, his people, and his subordinates. And among countless soldiers and generals and Romans of the Three Kingdoms, one man was particularly honest. Like Zhuge Liang, he had no selfishness, nor was there any greed in him. He was ready and willing to give his life for his country, for the king, and for the masters he served. Despite many battles and wars in which he was a part, this man, this general, didn't care to safeguard his life, but sacrificed himself completely for the master he served, the king for whom he was fighting, and the country he was protecting. Do you remember who this was? He was Zhao Yun. Now, this commander, who had been in out of so many battles and battlefields, was not put in any danger by being shot at by an arrow or stabbed by a sword. He won every battle and and the war he you know he fought. A soldier who dies in battle is to be dying an honorable death. Yet Zhao Yun you know, lived to old age without facing death on the fields of battle. He died because of an old age, not after a bout uh, with an illness, but after having grown weak. Zhao Yun saw God's favor, even in the manner in which he died. He was a good man and a great general who had committed no sins and harbored no greed or selfishness. You know, there was no blemish about him in his character or in his life. For that reason, he lived a long and healthy life and died of an old age. When we look at the lives of people who lived and died without having known God and our Lord, but were truly good, we know such a things are possible by the truth. Abraham wanted to receive every blessing that every blessing only from God. He didn't want to store wealth by following his own desires in a fleshly way, but wanted to be rich only with the blessings that God gives when a person's soul gets along well. This was deemed to be upright and truthful in God's sight, and God considered him as good. 
As we read in the Proverbs 11.3, the integrity of the upright will guide them. Abraham could continue walking the path of blessings that God had prepared for him. If you want to receive blessings from God, you must first accomplish the kind of goodness that Abraham possessed. You must walk uprightly in God's eyes without any selfish desire. But many people follow their own desires and seek the personal benefits as they see fit, so they are unable to receive blessings from God. On this, Proverbs 28.10 tells, tell, tells us, He who leads the upright astray in an evil way will himself fall into his own pit, but the blameless will inherit good. Even if no one openly leads you onto the path of evil, you are tempted, become deceived, and fall into traps to the extent greed drives your heart. Therefore, I wish all of you to keep in mind this verse, the blameless will inherit good and receive overflowing blessings in every aspect of your life. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, Abram was so upright and faithful in the sight of God that he never tried to take anything he could have thanked him and couldn't be blamed for anything. He paid the proper price for something he could have received for nothing. And we see this in Genesis chapter 23 when Abraham purchased the burial site for his wife Sarah. The Hittites told Abraham they would give him a tomb for nothing to bury his wife. But Abraham refused the offer on the spot and paid a large sum for the cave in the field of, you know, Machpelah. It shows Abraham had no selfish desire, but was so honest and upright that he would not receive anything for free or anything that was not proper. The fact that Abraham brought, I mean, the uh, Abraham bought the burial site and in, I mean, irrevocably made it his position was possible because he had wisdom of goodness. The mind of fleshly people can change any time. Even if they offer the burial site free of charge now, they can just as easily have a change of heart and ask for it back later. After the passage of time, long time, that they could have asked for the plot back. So if Abram had not done as he did, he might have been forced to relocate the burial site. So Abram was able to see into the future and removed all possible causes of you know, potential problems that could transpire. Genesis 23 verses 17 and 18, all the territories surrounding the burial site were deeded over to Abram for a possession in the presence of the sons of Heth, before all who went in at the gate of his city. He left no room for bickering and making the deal special. Abram was very wise to have done this. With this good wisdom, Abram didn't receive the loot the king of Sodom had offered them. If he had received it, when Abram became richer, the king might have said, Abram was made rich because the king had given all the plunder to Abraham. By firmly refusing, I will not take a thread or a sandal thong or anything that is yours. Abram carried himself and conducted business in such a wise manner so that he left nothing to disgrace God. Abram gained this wisdom of goodness because he sought to follow the uprightness and faithfulness from the depths of his heart. After some time had passed since accepting the Lord, I wanted to open a bookstore. That's when my older sister and an older brother came by one day to plead with him. Why do you want to start a bookstore of all of things? It just doesn't look good. We'll give you money to do something else. So they offered to loan me the money to do the something else instead. But I had already prayed and resolved a start a bookstore, so I didn't want to change my heart or receive help from others, even if the help helping came from my own siblings. 
If I refuse this offer, thinking, you know, if I accept and receive their help now, I will help me now, but I will not be able to give glory to God the Father later. I'm going to trust only in God. So I ended up in refusing their offer. And at the time, I had just been healed after being on the sickbed for seven years and had a lot of debt. I could have accepted their money and said to myself, Oh my, this is how God blesses me. God's finally begun His work in my life. But I refused their help. Later on, I became so thankful for my decision that day. Had I accepted their help, I would have no choice but to acknowledge to my siblings' words if they were to say, Without our help back then, you couldn't be where you are today. And then, you know, unable to give glory to God. You know, I've always trusted only in God. It was the same with the founding of this church. When I founded Mammon Church with only $7 in my pocket, I didn't ask for or receive help from anybody, any of my siblings, or anyone else I knew back then. I didn't, so, you know, I didn't solicit their assistance. I didn't ask for it. I didn't ask any of my siblings to begin attending the church I had founded. My older sisters, whom I had evangelized, were already attending another church with their children, who are my nephews and nieces. Not once did I ask any of my family members or relatives, I'm starting a church, please help. I didn't ask any of my siblings or anyone else I knew at the time. I trusted only in God. For the reason, I, created a, I, I made a prayer room in that tiny sanctuary, and from day one, I clung to God in prayer in that room. Those of you who have been with us since the beginning know this very well. Even during the hottest days of the summer, they would go into the prayer room and devoted themselves themselves to prayer until they sweated as if they had been rained on. There was no ventilation or fan. In that tiny room, they would pray until their clothes were soaked in sweat. That's how we devoted ourselves to prayer. Through prayer, we received everything from God one by one, little by little. It's the same for you as well. If you truly loved God and possessed the faith, if you could trust in God for anything, big or small, ask Him for it in prayer and actually receive it from God, then He will keep and lead you from beginning to the end. Why? From the depths of your heart, you trust in God alone and your faith is a testament to it and according to your faith, God will take care of you. So, as you've been, I mean, as you've seen all along, uh, God has created something and everything out of nothing when we prayed and asked Him by our faith alone while, you know, placing our complete trust in Him. Our Father God has taken care of us and leads us. There are many mommy members today who, in their love for God, have received the blessings from God. For that, I'm truly thankful. Whenever I see them, I'm thankful as they have been and are being changed by God's word and receive His blessings. Through the refinements, they only depend on God now. Thinking of today, they said, there are too many businesses. We've got to go out to the world, so we've got to hire more. Can I hire more? I want to enlarge my office space. Well, it's his company. He's the owner of the Tang country, so he could have done whatever he wanted to do. But he had a desire to depend on Father God, so that's why he asked me. And I was pleased with his question. So please do. You should hire more. You gotta move to a, a bigger place. So I prayed for him for that way. Please, Father God, may him hire good people. Well, since he is the owner, but he didn't run his business as it is fit, he tried to depend on Father God for it is small or big. Since he depended only on Father God and lived, by, lived only by God's will, you know, he is still receiving blessing. He is receiving blessing upon blessing. Now, what is the wisdom of goodness? It's good and wise to take after Father God and trust only in God. When we seek and gain wisdom, we must ask to receive such wisdom from above. We have to receive and be clothed with good wisdom and understanding from God. 
not the wisdom of this world and with, I mean, it's evil ways. There's another illustration of Abraham's goodness in chapter 21 of Genesis. Water was scarce during Abraham's time, and one day servants of you know, Abimelech you know, seized the well belonging to Abraham. It was Abraham who incurred loss because of this incident. But when he met with Abimelech you know, concerning this matter, he didn't ask for compensation right to him, but made the right to possess the well clear by giving Abimelech seven little lambs. Even though Ab Abimelech was in the wrong, Abraham first pursued peace and at the same time made everything clear so that there, will, there would never be any quarreling over the ownership of the well. If Abraham had only rebuked Abimelech for his wrongdoing, Abimelech would have been forced to draw back rather than repent and turn from his way. This, in turn, would have left no room for true peace between the two men. If Abimelech faced difficulty or was concerned that at a later time, he could have violently seized the well again. Abimelech should have compensated Abraham for the loss, but instead received a prize for the well from Abraham. That's why he surrendered himself to Abraham from the depths of his heart and never took the well from then on. This shows us how wise Abraham was in carrying himself and giving about his everyday activity. Abraham was led on to the path of blessings that God had prepared for him. He did everything in a perfect and exact manner, and the result was always impeccable because he had the wisdom of goodness. If you do everything with wisdom and good heart, you will have nothing to quarrel about and have peace with everybody. You will also be able to complete your tasks perfectly so that nothing wrong will happen. But how do most people conduct in business and carry out themselves? They do not treat or react to such matters in goodness, but try to discern whose fault it is. If ill feelings increase within you and the other party with the passing of time, the matter ends up becoming much bigger. But if you possess the wisdom of goodness, you will not be interfered in expanding God's kingdom and righteousness, but accomplish His providence quickly. If you treat with the wisdom of goodness the party who was wrong to you, wrong to you, you will be able to change him to become your helper. You may even be able to touch the other person's heart. Please keep in mind that this wisdom of goodness comes upon you when your heart becomes generous and when you conduct yourself in an unselfish and honest manner. Well, let me tell you one more testimony. So this is the testimony about the uh, spouses. So I would like to give you the testimony of the uh, wife. There was a meeting uh, for the great parish, grand parish. So she prepared herself well on her way out. She met her husband. So before she went to church, and and she couldn't even um, tell his um, tell her husband that he, she would have a meeting at, at the church. But you know, she set the table for him. She was sorry to the church, but you know, she wanted to serve her husband well with uh, warm rice. So I said, "You've done well." And she said, "Yesterday, she came out." While driving, she realized that she left in you know, her bag in, in his room, and he got no, you know, uh, the money for. He, and she couldn't afford the uh, um, afford the gas, so she was you know, astonished. She got no money. So she went home to take the bag. When she got home, her husband said, Why do you come like this? All you gotta do is just give me a call. Then I will get back to you. But why do you come to this place? 
But she was sorry. She was sorry to leave her back home. Of course, she knew that you know her husband would you know uh, bring that back to her. And she just walked to her home. It wasn't far, I guess. So think about her husband. He knew that his wife left the bag. So the wife cared for his her husband, and the husband cared for his wife. You know, if husband and wife can trust each other like this and put priority on God's kingdom, and if they serve each other, it will be good. So I told her that you've married a good person. Everybody, everything is in peace, right? How good goodness is, my dear brothers and sisters, among parents and children. Among spouses, among neighbors, among co-workers, inside the church, outside the church, how good is it? The goodness and the love. How good is it if we make peace with everybody? I told you. I introduced the testimony. He wanted to hire more because there are too many things to do. The current number is not enough. So I would like to I would like to make him in you know, hire more so that you know they wouldn't be in trouble while running business. You know, he worried about his you know, uh, you know workers because there are too many things to do. So he wanted to make his make their lives you know easy. He had such goodness too. He always showed goodness, even when he was in difficult times. I've never seen his wife in you know, a squinting her eyes. She always had faith. I thought myself, you know, she would be in a very difficult situation, but she's always you know, make smile. There are there are members who. Always have their in the faces. They always greet me with in you know, a smile on their face. So, brothers and sisters, let us follow goodness. Let us resemble our Father God and the Lord and Abraham. How beautiful this goodness is! It's time to conclude this message for the brothers and sisters in Christ. We examine two aspects of Abraham's goodness today. The first aspect of Abraham's goodness, which God recognized, was Abraham's gentleness and reasonableness. And the second was the fact that he was unselfish, upright, and faithful. People of this world with fleshly goodness may appear weak and you know, gullible, so they face various difficulties. But people whose goodness is recognized by God do not encounter such problems. Because they received the wisdom of goodness as Abraham did, they can solve any problem in peace and prevent any potential troubles. Genesis 3 verses 17 and 18 says, The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering, without hypocrisy. And the seed, whose fruit is righteousness, is sown in peace and by those who make peace. May each one of you long for goodness even more. And attain the level of Abraham's goodness about which you heard today, so that God's blessings and grace will abound in your life. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's receive senior pastors on screen prayer for the sick. Put your hands on the sick part of your body, and if you are not sick, lay your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. Hallelujah, Almighty Father, God of love, please lay your hands on those who are receiving this prayer now. Transcending space and time, show your works to your children who are receiving this prayer on the Internet and through GCN in brain churches and local sanctuaries around the world. Give them the faith to believe and drive away their negative thoughts and doubts and drive away all their tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrailed joints, nerves, tissues, and cells, 
and whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and with the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, infirmities, go away, may the light come. Scorch all the terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases such as malaria. All contagious diseases such as cold, flu and fever go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, intestinal and all other cancers. AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid, heart and lung diseases, women's diseases and all inflammations be cleansed and go away. Please, heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs. Back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains go away. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened. You get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well, let the ears hear well. Let the blind come to see, the deaf come to hear, and mute come to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents and fix their broken bones. Let the heat and burning sensation go away. Restore them from burns. Let there be no burning scar left. All kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse go away. Let the dead nerves, tissues, and cells be regenerated and bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessing of conception. May you receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, go away. And their servants, go also go away. Go away, you evil, unclean, false and deceitful spirits, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen the bonds of wickedness. Darkness, you go away. May the light come. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer, to cast off sin, and to be sanctified. Just as their spirit and soul prosper, let all things go well with them, and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week, and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the firewall of the Holy Spirit, with the heavenly host and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their family, workplace, and the workplace and business. Give our students wisdom and understanding, and give them fervent passion to study hard. Keep their hearts and minds from the worldly things, and bless our students to love Father God all the more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or whatever they may do, let them do it all for the glory of Father God. Let them say, I met God, I experienced God, I received answers and blessings. Please bless them to say like this with their lips. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 それは命与える救いの